Hey friends. Ho, ho boy, we're off to a great start. Okay, uh, anyways, that was fun. Uh, cringy as fuck, but so is this video. Um, I came across this video, this, this beautiful, awful <laughs> $2,000 gaming PC video. I haven't watched it yet. I would, thought I'd react to it and give my thoughts on it as I do not have a super, super high-end rig, but a decent rig. Um, and yeah, as you know, I've upgraded to a 1060 and whatnot. We're going to be watching this. You always know it's going to be a good experience when this is disabled. The, the, the ratings of it and your comments as well. Let's see their tags here. Verge, Gaming PC, Windows 10, Review. I don't think it's a review. But here we go. Let's, let's dig in, dive in, and watch this. Possibly very cringy video. I've only seen the first 10 seconds, so. Oh boy! Ow. So a few years ago, TC or managing editor built a gaming desktop, but it kind of. Wait, wait, why is. Okay, I was like, why is my video so low quality? So a few years ago, TC or managing editor built a gaming desktop, but it's kind of out of date and it's definitely not going to hold up with that. I watched this far. So let's build a new one. I'm going to be stopping through periodically through this video, so just understand that. You can build a gaming desktop for around a thousand dollars, but I want to go all out. So you can build a gaming desktop for five hundred dollars. You can build one for three hundred dollars. Yes, you could build one for a thousand dollars, but I, all right, continue. I spent around two thousand. PC like this is going to be able to play most games at ultra settings. So ultra settings at what? Oh, uh, you haven't said the frame you haven't said the um frame rate for sure i mean this computer i have here can play games at ultra settings i have to you know just lower my resolution a little bit i can play at 900p ultra and somewhat 1080p ultra uh m older games especially but newer games it struggles with ultra settings but ultra also doesn't make a whole lot of sense you're giving up a lot of performance to have not as high end visuals it's not such a leap as like when you when the 360 uh, and the PS3 came out from the Xbox original and the PS2. Anyways, I digress. What do you need to build a desktop? Well, of course, first you need a table. You don't need a table. You can build it in a car if you want, or in a, a rug or carpet. I don't ever recommend it. You can though. I again, I digress. In some computers, you can even build in your hand. No, I'm serious. The mini ITX ones, Raspberry Pis, you can just build them. Anyways. Preferably not metal. If it's going to be metal, have an anti-static working surface. Um, anti-static, I have not personally had any issues with it. Yes, I'd recommend getting an anti-static wrist strap or just touching metal. Just touching your cases, uh, your metal case from time to time. Just make sure you don't have any issues. Also, don't wear uh, electromagnetic, like socks that will conduct electromagnetic current, whatever. A thermal paste applicator. No, you don't need a thermal paste applicator. Also, Allen wrench. Is that for the case? We'll find out. Wrench, some tweezers to tighten up the wires. For cable management, you could go with that, but okay. A Swiss Army knife, which hopefully has a Phillips head screwdriver in it. No. No, don't use a Swiss Army knife for building a computer. You can. But don't. Just have a proper screwdriver. If you honestly want to know what you could do, go to your your dollar store and buy a screwdriver there. I mean, I'm sure you have Phillips screwdrivers lying around your house. If you don't, just go to the dollar store. Ask your parents. Do, do whatever. And last but not least, an anti-static bracelet, which is to protect you and the parts. These are the parts you're going to need. But more importantly, before we get there, we need to understand what these parts are doing and how they interact with one another. To better understand the parts that make up a desktop, let's try to understand them individually. The processor is like the computer's brain, a base of calculations that control everything the computer does. It's That's true, however. The motherboard is like the foundation, serving as a main structure for all of the parts to be added to. It also allows the okay. other parts to communicate with one another, which also makes it kind of like a nervous system. First time I've ever heard that mm, example. The one, most ones I've heard is that the, um, the motherboard 
is basically like the body, like the torso, pretty much. You know, all of this area and everything else attaches to it. But anyways, I, I digress because the, the CPU is like the brain. Graphics cards are responsible for rendering and processing visuals, which True. you can see on screen. Our piece's power supply is, of course, channeling electricity, in that it adjusts... His voice is annoying me. ...to provide the right amount of energy to keep it running. Last but not least, RAM, or random access memory, and your hard drive are good examples of short-term and long-term memory, respectively. Okay. If you want to better understand what kind of computer to build, then first figure out what you want to use it for. A a gamer might care more about a graphics card than, say, a video editor who might want extra RAM to assist with editing. Wrong. A video editor is still going to want a high-end graphics card for CUDA performance or on uh, AMD side for OpenCL performance. You're going to want to have a CUDA will always make your thing faster than your processor for most times. I don't know with i9s if CUDA really makes as big of a difference, but anyways. Being large files. Or, sorry, uh the um, Threadripper as well. I don't if know. If you're building a budget build for video streaming, say, under $1,000, you want to focus on parts like a Core i5 or Core i3 processor that require less... You could also use AMD. You could use the Ryzen. They haven't talked about that. And you could also use FX for streaming. I know plenty of people, when I was on Twitch, that actually used uh, 8350s, 8320s, respectively, for that. And they are not expensive at all. It's energy. They'll be less powerful, but then you'll be able to scale back the cost of several other parts. And if you need help choosing the right parts for your build, there are sites like PCPartPicker.com that help show presets for which parts fit together. Okay, I'm glad they mentioned this. It is a great website. Um, I find the problem with PC Part Picker is they don't have, I mean, they have AMD, they have guides, right? They have guides, I, was say, I saw AMD guides. Uh, they have guides, build guides for streaming stuff, but I would say that your best bet is to honestly go on which I don't like Reddit. Go on Reddit slash r build a PC. They'll help you out. Um, they'll they'll be good. Which sort of part? Because then you can explain what you actually are going to be using this computer for, and then they'll help you find lists, or they'll help you find parts that will work in tandem with each other, and they have some reason to work tandem. And they will also allow you to be able to um, you know utilize like what you use, and then they'll give you a PC part like a uh, part picker list. My girlfriend also used PC part picker for hers conflicts you might have and where to find deals on new parts that's good we have a lot of boxes and a lot of pc parts so it's best you unbox them isolate the parts that you really need place items into the case and make sure that they all fit and then start working and now we're really going to start building by adding the motherboard in some notes about installing motherboards they're really delicate you should be really careful with them and screw in with confidence but also don't screw in too hard otherwise you could crack the board i, I have never cracked a board in my life knocked on wood but seriously i have not done that and i have tightened screws pretty far um just don't be a dumbass is really what it comes down to um i don't know if they're going to mention it they said put your p parts in i don't know if they're going to mention it and i'm going to say this right now uh when you're building a computer i mean i screw up and i forget to do this sometimes but when you're building a computer you should be building your computer outside the box for testing so you should be do, make sure that you get a post so you should have your power supply attached um to your computer obviously you want to have your cpu in you'll want to have your uh, gpu in um if your computer needs to have a gpu to even turn on if you don't need that if you don't have integrate integrated as my 3930k doesn't have integrated with the x79 chipset um but yeah and to turn it on there are like button you can buy a button that uh basically um emulate or replicates the front panel uh turn or on and off switch or power switch but um realistically you should build it out outside your computer you can take a you can take a screwdriver you can take a knife you can put it to the two pins to just um short it out it doesn't ruin it by the way it just shorts it out for a second and it turns it on um there are multiple ways to turn on a computer anyways continuing shows asus z370 motherboard wait what did he say motherboard for two otherwise you could crack the board I chose Asus Z3 Asus Z3 sorry 70 motherboard for two main reasons. One, it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and also it has support for NVMe SSDs, meaning you can get really fast SSDs that are really easy to install. Pay close attention to the brace that goes at the back of the computer. It's not called a brace. It is called a IO shield, input output shield. Just that just just making that clear. 
computer, you always have to make sure that you really hammer it in because there's no screw. It really just has You don't have to hammer it in as he puts it. You just want to make sure it's secure into your back of your computer, um, into the, the case. Uh, be careful, especially with older cases and especially with uh, cheaper cases. Uh, and even the, sh the shield itself, it can actually cut you if you're not careful. I mean, as they say, blood for the blood god. Um, it's <laughs> You're quite literally sometimes putting blood, sweat, and tears into your computers if you're like me, who's I take pride in what I build. has to go outside of the case and clasp onto the frame. And this is very important because otherwise you can't align the motherboard correctly with the hole. We're just going to start. Fun fact, you can run a computer without having the bio shield. It's just nice to have it. It's more aesthetic and it's actually safer if you don't want to short things out. Because yes, you can short out components by if you're not careful. Um, just by plugging things into the back. Just don't do that. Don't be dumb. Installing all eight screws. Sometimes there's more than eight screws. Also, it looks like, I mean, I could be wrong. This looks like an MATX board, but it also looks like an ATX board. It's a PCI E or PCI Express uh, X16 and eight that are messing with me. But anyways, I'm guessing it's a regular ATX. So next we're gonna install the RAM on the motherboard. You install it on a side. I, I do that, but you wanna to try to have it as straight down as possible so you don't strip the screws. I chose Corsair's 16 gigabyte Vengeance LED RAM for two main reasons. One, it has LEDs and we do like lights in our gaming desktops. Secondly, uh, it's pretty fast RAM. It's 2,666 megahertz, I believe. So it's pretty fast and this motherboard supports that speed, which is- If you're gonna spend $2,000, go for 3,000 megahertz RAM. Um, don't waste your money on fucking LED RGB RAM. Uh, if you're going to be going for a high-end gaming build, um, go for performance and then get aesthetics as you can. If you can get high-end gaming RAM, um, but you, you know, yeah. I mean, I mean, RAM speed doesn't really matter that much, but I'm saying if you're going to spend $2,000, go for something a little bit better. But also at the same time, you want to put all of your money into your graphics card as well. So I might take that point back. Open the slots first and just aligning the stick with the middle of the strip, not with the end, and just lining that up with the logo. So once you hear that solid clasp and you don't see the gold connectors on the side anymore, that's when you know the RAM is in. Step three, we're going to install the hard drive, or in this case, the NVMe SSD. I chose this format of solid state drive so that I could input it into the motherboard without having to worry about extra wires or putting it in a separate part of the case and just getting really messy. This is from Kingston, and it's 480... Kingston? Sorry, just I'm making fun of both. ...gigabytes, so it's not a lot, but you can always upgrade this and swap it out. Again, you're spending $2,000. i guessing he probably went for a 1080 Ti. Hopefully he did. He might have went for an RTX. I'm thinking he didn't because this video was uh, released recently. But um, if you're going to go for an SSD, if you're going for high-end, go for a terabyte or 512 at least and get yourself like a Samsung Evo 970 or something like that. Like, I mean, your, your, your SSD is going to be your boot drive and where your OS is gonna go. Um, you'll install it, be a couple games that you play on a regular basis on it, but it's not gonna be for a whole the hell lot, but still you wanna have, cause high capacity has definitely gone down in price. You're gonna wanna have something that's a little bit better quality. Uh, and nothing wrong, nothing against Kingston. I mean, they make some fine stuff, but there's better out there, especially at two grand. And it's only held down by one screw and the latch, so it's really simple and really straightforward. Speed for gaming is important when it comes to a hard drive. You want files to write quickly and you want games to load quickly, so that's why it's best if you use an SSD. Okay, so step four, we're going to install the graphics card. I chose PNY's GTX 1080, which is overclocked. You didn't go for a 1080 Ti, therefore you absolutely failed. I, I, no, no, he, he didn't go for a 1080 Ti. You had $2,000 and you bought, I actually, I don't know what he bought. I'll look after. And so it's a pretty easy installation. You're just going to find the gold connectors. I hate the music. And you're going to line this bracket with the back end bracket of your PC case. Now, which lane you choose depends entirely on what other parts you're going to put in the system. I'm just going to pick the top one because the... SSD is at the bottom and I don't want to cover it. I just think no wrong. You're usually going to you're always going to take the top one 9 times out of 10, 99% of the time. 
99.99% of the time, I should say, um, because you're going to want to have the faster time 16 slot. Another thing you'll want to know about building, especially with used parts, sometimes you're not going to have PCI Express, um, PCIe uh, 3.0. You might accidentally get 2.0 and God forbid 1.0. Um, you're not really going to notice a big difference. Honestly, I don't, I don't think it's, I think it's really, really hard to find the difference between 2.0 and 3.0 um, in, in terms of speed with single graphics cards. But yeah, no, you're, you're not, uh, you just go for the top lane always just, you know, um, that's really all I'll say on that. You can install a, a sound card into the, into the bottom parts and everything. But if you're doing, especially going to be doing SLI, which I don't think RTX are doing them anymore. I don't know whatever they have. Um, and 1080 Ti and 1080 and 1070. If you're going to do SLI, uh, you gonna, you're going to want to put the other card in the bottom, but you want to have the main primary card in the top anyway. So it's just I'm, I'm nitpicking at this point. Okay, what's next? Click down. Take your remaining brackets and just put them in the spots that you haven't used. You don't have to screw. I am terrible for this. I I oftentimes take my brackets out. Um, it's a dust. Hell, I'm, my dog's barking. Just uh, it's it's it can be dust hell, but I I do that. I will have my brackets uh, out, and I forgot to put them in. Again, nitpicking, but it's, it's not that important. It I mean, it traps, it blocks out dust, but yeah, you just clean your computer every few months. You're good, like every three months or so. Actually, hell, even you could clean it every month. Just take uh, ten minutes, just blow it out. Um, you know, clean out any dust and on your on your way. Put these in. They get bolted down by the back end bracket and your GPU is installed. Power supply top. I chose Corsair's 850 watt power supply because I need enough headroom for race racing GPUs when they come out and I don't want to have to upgrade it again. So all you have to do is take the brick and make sure that you align it with these little insulating pads so that the power supply doesn't short circuit and come into contact with the rest of the system. What? No, I, I, I'm gonna. He, he said so they don't short circuit and come in. What? So just take it in, slide it in nice and easy until you have a snug fit, and then shift it to the back and make sure it's right up against the frame. Now you just take the required screws and you tighten and screw in. So next step, we're going to install the CPU core. In this case, it's going to go on the top end of the case, and we're just going to have the hose hang out for a little while until we install the processor, which is going to come a little later. Always be sure to try to place it in the system first before you install it, because you can see it takes up a lot of space. But in this case, no pun intended, it fits in perfectly, and we're going to start screwing it in. I'm worried about the airflow in this case. I'm assuming it has good airflow, but I'm worried about it. There's nothing special about this screwing in process. They're just really long screws. Another thing to know too about, about um, I don't know if he's gonna show this yet, but another thing to know about uh, all-in-one coolers and with rad, rads or radiators, um, depending on the size of it, you're gonna have two to three, one, sorry, one to three, maybe even four uh, fans on it. Most times it's gonna be two to three uh, on, your, on your radiator. And they're gonna be either, you can either have them in push-pull or you could have them um, so, you know, two different ways. Um, or you could have them on the top or the bottom. Basically, what I'm saying is you can have your fans how you, you want to have them with enough airflow and, and whatnot. Um, but you could, you have the options to do it. Anyways, you want to, what I'm trying to say is you want to have enough clearance for your fans is what, I, what I'm trying to say. And uh, I know some people that opt to put their fans on the top of the, the, the rad. And I know some that opt to put it on the bottom. It's really at your discretion, but I just wanted to mention that as well. So screws because they go through the entire frame of the cooler. And but truthfully, if you're doing a build like this, a low profile build, honestly, just get yourself. Um, if you're not going to be overclocking and whatnot, and you're going for more silence, not silence, but you're going for as, as quiet as possible. Uh, go for a build that is, well, um, go go for an, a a a, span, a a knock to a heat sink a, a, a f air cooler is what i was trying to say go for a regular fan like standard heat sink yeah the dh14 is actually i think it's really good yeah and they take forever so next up cables 
Every power supply is gonna come with a big bag of Velcro cables. It's kind of daunting at first. Not every power supply is gonna come with a big bag. Some that are not modular don't come with any cables in a bag. They can just come attached to the power supply. My advice is go semi-modular if you're going for a power supply. Um, if but you're you start going for a lower end budget power supply, go for modu uh, semi-modular. If you're going for high end, go for fully. But if you need a, something in a pinch, so you can just get this, the, ke the condiments colored, so the ketchup mustard colored power supply. Anyways. You have to find the ones that are gonna fit. In this case, you need to match those cables with the correct descriptions on the power supply. The next step is we're connecting the power supply to the motherboard with the 24 pin cable. We're just matching that cable from the motherboard, threading it through the back, and attaching the 24 pin header to the power supply so that we can have one of the connections complete. The next few additions will be for the GPU, for any specific ports that the case has, for any lighting that the case has, the CPU cooler, the anything else really. We're installing the CPU, the heart of the computer or the brain, depending on how you look at it. So to do this, we're just going to remove the plastic covering that they put on the motherboard. We're just going to take this little plastic part out, just toss that out of here, and... Never do that. Never do that. Your pins... Take it out and put it in your motherboard box. Just never do that. Now we have an exposed CPU holder, or rather slot, on the motherboard. And we're gonna use the CPU applicator. This is a special little part that not everyone may get, but this motherboard that we got from ASUS definitely does have. It's called the CPU installation tool. It makes it really useful if you want to install a Core i7 Exacore CPU. Yeah, we've got one, and it's an eighth generation blue chip, and it's I don't even know which one they have there. Ready to go. And it supports overclocking. So what having this little installer does for you is it's basically a brace that you can apply right to the CPU and light it up with the triangles that we'll see on the bottom left. I'm not sure why you would do that, personally. It's not fucking rocket science. Pardon my French, but oh my god. This actually hurts my brain just watching this. But anyways. And this will make it easier for us to apply it to the motherboard and then apply it to the case and then apply a CPU cooler on top. And we're just going to carefully lean it down into the system and make sure that everything lines up. And we're going to clasp down on it and we'll be good to go. <sighs> All right, let's see how they do so this. We're about to apply thermal. thermal paste to the CPU. Every CPU cooler actually comes with a bit of thermal paste already neatly applied in a circle around it. But it's usually not enough. It's good, essentially, PC building practice to have a little bit extra and layer it on top of the CPU. The final portion. Why? Why would you do that? That is so... Oh my god. No. Okay? No. 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 It actually reminds me of, of Tech Syndicate. Um, how to apply thermal paste. They did this as a joke, but cheer God. Why? This is how you do it. Okay, Verge, you're fucking... That's it. A pea size. Like, like, like that, that small. Sorry. No. Petunia, make sure it's at uneven coverage and also it's going to like spill off the sides. It's just like, it'll be like smeared all over the place. No. Here's the line method. You draw a line right down the center, down, and it spreads out, covering the CPUs. This one sometimes can go off the side of that, but the sit down too much. Watch out because it's so badass. Nice. Little P in the middle, enter. Very nice. This is the metal method. The metal method runs about 50 degrees hotter, but it's totally worth it because it's so badass. Do you see that thing? 
don't ever apply your C your thermal paste like that. Ever. Thing is to add the CPU cooler to the top end. Of and it has enough solution on it. I mean, yeah, okay. I, I, again, this is, I've only really used, except for my Cooler Master, I, I've only really used, um, uh, used parts for uh, that. Actually, I don't think I've ever built a new computer. To be fair. No, the 8320 80 I did. Anyways, my, my point, FX 6300. My, my point being, um, don't do it like that. Just, um, just don't. Processor. So you're gonna see that there are four brackets, or rather like screws in here. Jesus. Brackets and holders right here. And they're going to keep the cooler raised off the processor, but it's also gonna be close enough to actually physically come in contact with it, but basically keep it cool. Take thumb screws like this, and just screw them on. So now that our internals are done, we're gonna put all the panels And on. now his thermals are gonna be off, a anyways. Which is the top glass, side glass, front glass, and of course the back panel where all this fun stuff is happening. So we fully built the PC, everything is put together, and we got to the post screen. So what's next? Well, it's not called the post screen, it's just called post, but anyways. Well, you need a USB flash drive with your Windows installation media on it, and of course, a license key. So I plugged that up, installed with- you don't, need a you don't need a Windows license key to run Windows. You don't need a Windows key to run license. You really don't. Just, just letting you know. You can, and it's good to have one, but you don't need one. Windows in a couple of minutes. In fact, a year ago, you could actually done the assistive technologies edition or version, which was free Windows, basically. Installed a bunch of drivers, and now we have a fully functioning gaming PC ready to run some games. Right now, I've got Armor 3 running, running at maximum settings, native resolution, which is 1080p HD, and it's... Why... Would you spend ten thousand? Why would you spend two thousand dollars on a ten eighty p computer? This, if unless this is a fourteen forty or one hundred and forty four hertz G Sync panel or something, why would you spend? It's not. I'm going to tell you, it's not. It's a Samsung panel. This isn't four. Like this machine could run four K. Jesus. It's running pretty smoothly. Like um, I'm averaging seventy and eighty FPS, and this is normally like a very intensive game to run. He's not wrong. It is intensive. Armor, Armor 3 is very intensive. And it's still doing a pretty good job. So right now I'm playing League of Legends. It's one of my favorite games. I'm actually playing against a bot, and I'm distracted, so I'm not actually doing so well. But um, otherwise, like this is pretty much what you would see me do on a gaming computer. Test stuff out, and hopefully have really high frame rates like I am right now. I'm averaging 120 FPS, and that's only because I've actually locked the game to that frame rate, because I can get around 300 FPS playing League on maximum settings, which is a little bit absurd, and you don't really need that, so I... Yes, you want as high as frame rate as possible. Oh my god. When you're playing League, it doesn't matter if it dips. Locked it. Building a gaming desktop has been a great experience. I'm able to max out a lot of my favorite titles, and I'll be able to play a lot of upcoming titles like Battlefield V and Cyberpunk 2077 without worrying too much about the parts I have. When ray tracing videos come out, for example, I'll be able to upgrade without having to buy a completely new system. And if I have a problem down the line, I can always just swap out a part and have it serviced rather than losing my whole computer. And of course, now we also have a computer to test and benchmark games here at The Verge. I... <sighs> Thanks for watching. Let me know if you've built a computer before yourself or how you would spend $2,000 on your own build. I'm really interested in seeing what sort of parts you guys would get. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe oh to The Verge if you haven't already. No, I'm not going to subscribe to The Verge. Okay, so what was wrong with that video? Um, I mean, obviously, I've given my thoughts on it, but really, it was just bad information. Uh, yeah, I'll give it. I'll give it credit. It shows Mac people how to build a computer. Show how simple it really is. They're not difficult to build. Um, he didn't do. I, I, he didn't show how to cable management. You know how to, how you cable managed. Um, so I would say that for that, I don't know. You could have showed that off. Um, honest to God, 
It wasn't the worst video I've seen. MSI probably takes that cake for how to build a computer. Their video was quite bad. Um, yeah, I, I would just say it was not very good. And yeah, they, they just... Wasn't the worst, but that was... That hurt me, especially with the F CPU thermal based. Anyways, I know this is super long. I know most of you probably didn't even watch this. Doesn't matter. I just wanted to upload this and give my thoughts. Don't, don't, don't build a computer like that. I mean, build a computer like that. Just what I want to know is their parts list. I want, I want to know what they actually had for their parts list. Um, see here, the Verge. Let's see, Verge, two K parts list. I, I just want to see. You spent. I hate the sub, but I want to see if they they talked about it. Oh God, it's not here. Okay, wait, Alinus, what's this? Oh, mm, anyways. So the two eighty Ti is sorry, the ten eighty Ti is almost the same as the two eighty. Wow. Um, I, yeah, it's good, but yeah, I, oh God. Oh. I, that physically, that, that physically hurts me. That video was just painful. That video w was painful. September 13th, it released a couple days ago, but I, ah, uh, I just, that why would you why would you do that why 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 would you do that um uh, slash art build of pc why would you yeah that that w he wasn't running his RAM in dual channel. That's not how he just passed by a lot of X RAM, not using slots for dual channel, just dump. Th yeah, not two and four. Same as 850 is a waste of money. Dumb. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I was saying, 3200. PSC will not fry. This was an awful, like, in that sense, that was just bad. Did you just put on a stretchy rubber blade and call it an anti-static? Yeah. Who puts their GP? Like, no. Yeah, don't, I, I don't even, uh, I, uh, uh, it physically hurts me when I, now I, the more I think about it. Okay, I'm curious about the parts. I mean, it, no, 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 that does not look good actually at all. Wait. Why is his GPU? Why? What? Why? Oh, oh my God. No, no. That is a terrible, the more I look at it, the more I'm actually offended by that build. Why would you, why would you do that, man? Okay, here it is, the, the parts, DIY PC, DIY, oh, I fucking hate that, anyways. 8700K, okay, 
I don't know why he said, oh, we got one confidential. It wasn't it's 8700K. Uh, H115i Pro. Nine. Okay, I want to know what, yeah, like how much. So it is an MATXK board. Why would you spend a thousand, two thousand. A hundred and sixty dollars for your case, and you could got. So this okay. So it's thirty three, thirty three. All right, four eighty gig. Oh my god, Jesus. Okay, you know what? Just because I'm actually triggered by this, I want to show you what you can actually pick for that money. You ready? PCPartPicker.com will go USD because that's where this video was made. We'll do a parts list, feel your system build. I do builds all the time. All right, so 8,700K, that's fine, all right? $359, 350 Choose a cooler. Um, I will go with the cooler you had. I don't care for that cooler, but let's just go with the exact parts and see if I can make it a little bit better. Because that actually, the more I look at that, that the more that offends me. Also, I would personally go with this instead. Anyways, a little bit extra, but whatever. Choose a motherboard. Um, he went with the Asus ROG Strix Micro ATX. Well, we're gonna go with something a little bit better than that. Um, we're not gonna go with an MATX board. We're gonna go with an ATX board because that's what you should be doing. I don't know why you'd ever do that. Um, we're gonna go with this. It's about the same. Okay, cool. All right, so we're at 680 so far. Again, we're gonna spend $2,000 better okay Corsair Vengeance LPX to me that looks a lot nicer I don't care for RGB that's just me and that's 16 gigs okay I would do 32 gigs especially for video editing anyways cho choose storage right let's choose a much better drive so what we're looking for here is an MV NVMe SSD so we want B plus M and we're going to want to go organize by the size. Size, let's see here. Um, I did mention that you should be going for like a Samsung. The 860 is, is fine. Um, and I'm going to go with Samsung because I think I think they have some pretty good NVMEs. All right, what do you have here? So we're going to spend, wait, I think I have something wrong. Hold on, hold on one second here. Okay. All right, M, there it is. Okay, so an M.2 SSD, you're looking at, looking for the 970 Pro, just because we're gonna go all out here. Um, we're gonna grab ourselves, is there a one terabyte 970 Pro? Looks like there's a 960 Pro. Okay, so 970 Pro exists, but uh, we'll just go with the 970 Evo. All right, we haven't got to the GPU yet. Again, this is how you can blow $2,000, ready? 1080 Ti, let's look for a relatively affordable 1080 Ti, because uh, it makes no sense to go for that. All right, 1080 Ti. This one here, $649, bam. All right, 1800. So we'll go for a little bit of a, a case I personally like, We'll do a little bit of justifying here, or a little bit of dropping down prices. Uh, I like the fractal design to find R5. I think, sorry, R6 actually looks really good. I think that's a nice looking case, and it looks a hell of a lot better than what he has. No offense to him. But anyways, all right, we're at 1920. Okay, we'll go for power supply. You don't need anything super or super super for super whatever. This will be fine. EVGA is supernova. It's fully modular. Two thousand dollars. Okay. And there we go. There's there's the case. It's a much better, much better case. I could cut costs by going for, uh, by dropping down. We're not missing anything, by the way. You, you Windows, I guess, if you want a Windows key, we'll just throw that in for the hell of it. Uh, Microsoft, because he included that in the price of the build. Yeah, he did. Doesn't say how much it costs, but anyways. Windows 10. Where's the operating system? Can you not buy Windows 10 on here? Looks like you can't buy Windows. 
<laughs> That's funny. All right. So anyways, we'll just say it's $100 extra, but we're not going to work with that. Okay. So $2,000, right? So what can we cut back? Well, we could go with a, a lower, we could go with a little, something a little bit lower. We don't need this, uh, this, this motherboard here. We could go with something a little bit, a little bit, a little bit lower end, but you know, still pretty good. We'll go with this, um, what has, what has good ratings here? Yeah, we'll, we'll go with uh, Gigabyte, actually. I, I really like Gigabyte. Um, let's see here, take a look at the Gaming 5. Oh, that's nice. Actually looks pretty cool. My girlfriend actually has, uh, I think she, she has an MSI board. But anyways, there's $2,000. And I got a 1080 Ti in my build. So yeah, suck it, Verge. Wait, what? M.2 Slayer number two. Oh, okay, okay. That's what it was, sorry. Anyways, yeah, there you go. That's that's not how you build a computer, okay? That this, if you're gonna go for this, you know, I just wanna see, can we even do an i9? I'm, I'm legitimately curious. Can we do an i9 just to make it overkill? Is there any i9s here? i9s, all right, so we'll kill off the motherboard. Not that I'm ever gonna recommend this, but. Uh, let's just see if we can get a 9.9 in, in this build. <laughs> 72 grand and you get a fucking, oh my God. No, you, you can't for $2,000, but. I'm just curious what this would cost us. Oh, it's EATX, okay. Strix, there we are. All right. So for almost three grand, you could get yourself an i9 build. My point being, Jesus, that, that was, that actually sucked. Um, yeah, yeah, oh God, like why, why would you build that? Why would you, why, why would you build that, man? It just. I, I don't I don't understand why you would build a computer like that. Anyways, I would say go for a seventy seven hundred. Well, yeah, seventy seven hundred K. But just that that just doesn't make any sense. But anyways, if you're gonna if you know you want to have a two thousand dollar build, here you go. Okay, here's your here's your two thousand dollar build. This is an ATX board. It has room for everything. There you go. I just built a computer better than the Verge under two thousand dollars. Their their total price was nineteen forty eight. I built it for cheaper. <laughs> With rebates, so okay, ten dollars more. I'm done. I, I this is this computer is just far better than what they have. Just <sighs> Jesus. Jesus, that is. That's American. So what would that be in Canada? Twenty-five seventy-seven. Stick to iPhones, guys. And. Just so we can have it right under without rebates. They don't even know hard, have a hard drive in there. Like he, he talks about load times and stuff, but. I, that actually physically hurts me when I look at it, you know? Anyways, let's see here. Uh, 960 Pro is still pretty pretty solid and you get a one terabyte there you are i built it for cheaper than the verge ever did i get better parts just by changing one part oh my god
I don't know how Markov works on, on Reddit anymore. They've changed everything. That's it, guys. That's that's the final nail in the coffin for the verge. Don't build your computer. Doing so well, but um, otherwise, like this is. Was that a bird? Bot. Oh, sorry. I, I know this video has gone on way too long. Stick to stick to Apple, guys. You're better at that. Like it, dislike it. Peace.